I mentioned it in the summary, but you can think of the theme of section 3.5 as being writing functions in a creative way so that the rules we have apply. And you just have to get an eye for recognizing when you actually have an exponent, uh, exponent floating around and how you can rewrite something so that we can use the power rule. Because in the end, the power rule is going to be the most powerful thing that we have right now. So I selected some problems out of your textbook that I thought would illustrate this creative use of exponents. And it's really not that we're making up functions, it's that we're just writing them in a new useful way that might not have made sense uh, before. So I'm starting off with a function that uh, I can immediately rewrite. Notice that it says finding d dx. That's just saying find the derivative with respect to x of all of this. Now I'm going to change to prime notation. And the first thing I always do is rewrite everything so it's really clear what the exponent is. So this first piece right here, I'm going to write this as 5 fourths times x cubed. That's the exact same thing because the x cubed is on top. And then minus, I'm going to take out 2 fifths. But now the x cubed is on bottom, so this is actually times 1 over x cubed. Now normally I would skip that step that I just wrote down, this part. And I'll explain why in a minute. But at first I'm going to write down every step so you really see what I'm doing. All right, so this is going to be 5 fourths x cubed minus 2 fifths. Okay, what am I doing here? This is what I would usually have written down first. 1 over x cubed is the same as x to the minus 3 power. Now normally I wouldn't write it that way because why? It looks more complicated. But now I have it written as an actual exponent in a much more clear way. It was an exponent before, but now it's much more clear how I can apply the power rule. Now notice that we have a function minus another function. Technically, I can take the derivative of this, subtract it, and take the derivative of this. And that's essentially what I'm going to do. I'm not going to write it down that way, but that's actually what I'm doing. So now I'm going to drop the prime notation because I'm going to do the calculus stuff now. So 5 fourths x cubed, the derivative of x cubed. You bring down the 3, bring down the power, keep x, subtract 1 off of the 3, so I'm left with the 2. And then minus 2 fifths. Now I'm going to take the derivative here, bring down the minus 3, bring down the exponent, keep the x, subtract 1 off of minus 3, so I get minus 4 left. Okay, all the calculus is done now. Everything from here on out is just algebra and simplifying. Your textbook uh, usually has answers in the back with the negative exponents. I don't like negative exponents, and it's not proper to use them. It, you know, proper might be the wrong word. It's not ordinary to use them unless you started out with them in that way. So usually we want to write the function back the way it came. You know, in the original problem, we didn't have any negative exponents. So I'm going to fix that, and I'm going to write it kind of like we saw originally. So here I got 3 times 5, so I got 15 fourths x squared minus, but there's also a minus here, so this will be plus 3 times 2, 6 over 5 x to the minus 4. And the next to the minus 4, I can basically go backwards here and say, well, that's 1 over x to the 4. So this will be 15 fourths x squared and then plus 6 fifths times 1 over x to the 4th. Now this step you're basically simplified, but if we really want it to look like it originally did, I can rewrite that last one and say this is plus 6 over 5 times x to the 4th. And now I've completely simplified my answer. By the way, notice, first step, rewriting the function, that was algebra. This step was calculus and then algebra, algebra, algebra. Most of what we do is going to be simplifying with algebra. The calculus part is going to be quick and short, and then we got to clean up what happened. All right, so there's one algebra thing people forget a lot, and that's the uh, square root is actually an exponent. And when I rewrite this function, because remember, I always rewrite before I find the derivative, I say, okay, this is 5 times w to the minus 6 minus 2. I have to remember when I rewrite this what exponent this represents. If it's a square root, it's the 1 half power. If it's a cube root, it's the one-third power. If it's a fourth root, it's the one-fourth power. That's all you got to remember. So in other words, the nth root of x is x to the one over n power. So that's what rule I'm using here. So notice, that's just algebra. I'm going to take the derivative of this now. So I keep the 5, bring down the minus 6, keep the w, and subtract 1 off the minus 6. 
here. Keep the minus 2. That's that rule that says constants can come out, so I'm just leaving it. Bring down the 1 half. Keep the variable and subtract 1. 1 half minus 1 is minus 1 half. Okay, that was the calculus step. Now I just got to simplify this. So this will be minus 30 w to the minus 7. I'll handle that in a second. And then 2 times 1 half is 1, so it's a minus 1, which I just write as minus w to the minus 1 half power. Now to get rid of these negative exponents, I got minus 30 divided by w to the 7th minus 1 over w to the 1 half. You can leave it like this, or since we start out with a square root, you could also write minus 30 over w to the 7 minus 1 over the square root of w. Either one's really acceptable, um, so you can leave it like this. You have to be comfortable with this because if the textbook has it written one way and you wrote it another, you want to be able to go back and forth and say, did I actually get this right example, or not? I picked a problem where we'd have to deal with fractions and negative exponents just for practice. I think you can handle them, but a lot of times people have spent their lives avoiding fractions and there's no need for it. You just have to be a little more careful. So the first step I'm going to use is rewriting the function. So this is 5t to the minus 1 fifth minus 8t to the minus 3 halves. And I haven't taken the derivative yet, so I keep my prime. All right, now I'm going to take the derivative. The 5 is a constant, so, and it's multiplying, so it stays. And I'm going to take the derivative of t to the minus 1 fifth. So I bring down the minus 1 fifth, keep the t, and then it's minus 1 fifth minus 1, which is the same as minus 5 over 5. I'll handle that in a minute. Okay, now, got minus 8, so I keep that. And now I'm taking the derivative of t to the minus 3 halves, so I bring down the minus 3 halves keep the t, and then take minus 3 halves minus 1, which is the same as minus 2 over 2. Calculus step is done. Now I got to apply algebra. So 5 times minus 1 fifth is minus 1. So this is a minus t. And then minus 1 fifth minus 5 fifths is minus 6 fifths. So the power is minus 6 over 5. And then I got a minus 8 times a minus 3 halves. So that will be a plus 24 over 2, which is 12, but we'll fix that in a minute. And then t is to the minus 3 halves minus 2 halves, so it's minus 5 halves power. All right, in other words, I have minus 1 over t to the 6 fifth power, 6 fifths power, and plus 12 times 1 over t to the 5 halves. This is totally acceptable. The other way you might see it written down sometimes is minus 1 over t to the 6 fifth plus 12 over t to the 5 halves power. You might see that sometimes, but these are the same thing. It's just where you put the 12 or not. Again, notice one quick step for the calculus. Everything else was just organizing your work using algebra. That's why I try to reiterate a lot to you that those algebra skills that if you forgot any of them you want to practice so that you can focus on the new calculus stuff and not focus too much on the algebra. Even though it's a big part, the new part is supposed to be the calculus.